Hello and welcome to the Snap Revise YouTube channel. I'm Amy and for this video I'm going to be going over some common mistakes that A-level chemistry students seem to be making in their exams so that you don't make them in yours. All of the feedback that I compiled over the exam boards, um, examiner's reports that I read was quite similar, which is quite interesting to see that despite what the content of the course is, students are still making common errors when it comes to their exam technique or just when it comes to basic knowledge of chemistry. This feedback is from the 2019 and 2020 series. Um, if you want to go back further than that then feel free to do so. Go to your exam board website and look for examiner's reports and you can find them all on there. Make sure that you're going through them with the actual exam paper that it was written about next to it so you can have a look at what the feedback looks like compared to the questions. So the first thing that came up again and again in examiner's reports was knowledge of practical procedures and methodologies. Now this is quite a fundamental gap in chemistry knowledge. Your practicals form quite a lot of your assessment and a lot can be learned from all of your chemistry practicals. So you need to be making sure that you're making the most of these lessons and asking all the questions that you need to ask. What you're aiming for is knowing why a certain practical procedure is used um, and the role that each piece of equipment plays within that experiment. Think about all of the reagents, the types of reactions that are going on, why you use certain steps at the time that you use them. All of this will show a much more in-depth knowledge and you will be able to answer exam questions about that practical procedure no matter what comes up. So knowing why you do things is so important. If you're quite early on in your A-levels, so if you're starting year 12 or year 13, then make sure that you use your practical lessons to ask all of these questions and really explore the practical as a whole. If it's a bit later and you're watching this video as you're preparing for exams and it's still not too late, make sure you refer to your practical handbook that contains all of the information that you should know about the practicals and just make sure that you are assessing your knowledge of practicals by doing past paper questions on practical elements. If you are watching this while revising, Thing. don't worry we have a skills and science series which covers your practical skills that you need to be working on watch that just up here another part of the practical assessment that you need to focus on in your revision is being able to write about your observations of certain experiments there are certain key terms that you need to make sure you're using different colors that you need to talk about when it comes to certain chemical reactions and you will have gone through these in your practical lessons so there won't be anything that you haven't seen before that you need to describe it will be something you've seen before um, but just make sure that you're talking about about your practical observations in the right terms. Again, your practical handbook contains all of the information about chemical reactions that will happen and what you will observe from them. Your ability to make observations on practical procedures shows off your ability to understand the chemistry at play. So for example, you might be given a question which gives you a chemical equation um, and you're asked to identify what observations will be made from that reaction. So remember that your practicals aren't separate to the specification. They are real life examples of where the chemistry you're learning about is being put into practice. So try to make a link from your respect to your practical handbook and make sure you're absolutely clear on what's going on in every single experiment, why it's happening um, and you will be absolutely set for practical questions. So another stumbling block in A-level chemistry is the inability for students to apply their knowledge to unfamiliar contexts. So an unfamiliar context in chemistry will likely come in the form of a compound or a certain chemical that you're not familiar um, with the name of. Just remember that every time you see something come up that you have never seen before, just remember it is something you're familiar with disguised as something completely different. Exams like this kind of test because it really does separate out the students who have put in the effort to develop their knowledge um, a bit deeper within the spec rather than those that have just memorised examples from the textbooks or from the lessons. This is a difficulty that is shared by students across A-level sciences, it's not just chemistry chemistry um, because at its core science is about pushing our knowledge to new boundaries. So applying your knowledge to unfamiliar contexts is something that you might want to focus on in your revision. We've made a video about doing this for biology and you can watch that just up here but to be honest the principles in that video can be applied to chemistry too. In a nutshell you want to make sure that you truly understand all of your A-level concepts. And while you revise each topic, think about ways that it could be applied to the real world. A bit of wider reading around topics to try and place your learning into a real world context will go a very long way. So the next thing that you need to look out for in your exams is confusion around chemical concepts. Surprisingly, it did seem that a lot of marks were lost across the board due to simple errors in your chemical understanding. For example, confusion between mass and volume, mixing skeletal and structural formulae, um, significant figures versus decimal points, IUPAC naming rules, incorrect organic structures, careless drawing of curly arrows, 
um, converting between units, balancing equations and charges. Um, these are all things that came up time and time again, despite being key to your chemistry learning. Check your knowledge of everything that I've put up on the screen here um, and make sure that you are so clear when you're reading exam questions, what is being asked of you and how you should format your answer. So the next piece of advice based on examiner's reports is structuring longer responses. So when you're asked to give a more detailed response in A-level chemistry, you need to plan out how you're going to respond to the question so that you can demonstrate a structured response that also satisfies all of the parts of the question. First things first, avoid writing what the question has already written. Don't repeat the information that you've been provided. Obviously, you're not gonna get any marks for this um, and you're just wasting your time writing it out again. We want accurate and precise responses, so we don't want any waffle and we don't want anything that just is irrelevant to the question. Examiner's reports also mentioned that a few times students were throwing out alternative answers. Um, you're not going to get a mark if you provide two responses that are completely contradicting um, because even if one's correct, the fact that you've written another one shows you don't actually know the answer. Um, so marks that you could have picked up will be negated. Only stick to one response um, and if you're not sure, go with your gut feeling. Just write a good, accurate and precise response to the question. Um, don't fling out another answer because you will never get more marks for that. If you're using extra paper, make sure that you mark clearly what the extra response is answering. Um, examiners don't have time to flip back through and check that you have written in response to a certain question or to find the question that you are responding to. Um, so that's a really important thing to think about in longer responses. Neat handwriting is key as well, um, especially if you're writing um, smaller state symbols in chemical equations. If these are difficult to read, even if they're correct, you might not get the mark. And clearly cross out responses that you don't want to be marked. Um, so if you've written a plan and you don't want that to be part of the marking, then just do one line through each sentence. Um, same thing if you've realised that you've made a mistake in how you're responding, just do one neat line to cross out your response um, and start writing again below. Longer calculations also count as a written response. Um, when you're doing longer calculations, make sure that you clearly mark out each step um, with a new line. And do this in a logical way, so make sure that you're progressing through the calculations clearly, that the examiner can see why you've moved on to a new line um, and where all the numbers have come from. And again, like I said, make sure that you give the response in the format asked for by the question. So carefully read the question, consider all of the information it's providing you, and make sure that you are very clear on how to give your answer. If you struggle with any of the mathematical elements, so converting between units, or finding significant figures, or doing decimal places, then consult your exam board's advice on the mathematical requirements for your course. Remember that all of the math that comes up in A-level science is equal to a higher GCSE level. So if you didn't do too well on your GCSE, GCSE maths paper, then maybe go back and make sure that everything that's going to come up in the exam um, is polished up a bit. If you've got any questions about using examiner's reports um, or revising for A-level chemistry, then pop them down below in the comment section and we will do our best to answer them. If you aren't already, then you might want to think about subscribing to Snap Revise just here. We have loads of content to help you with your A-level revision. Um, and this video here goes through some documents that you might want to be using if you want to get an A star in your A level. Thanks so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you again on the Snap Revise YouTube channel soon.